Hey guys, in this episode, we're going to be beating the crap out of each other. We're going to be really explosive with some dynamic combative movements. Don't try any of this stuff at home. As a SEAL for 12 years, I learned quick that testing and evaluation are critical. I want to have the zip ties knuckle to knuckle. You have no idea what works and what doesn't until the bullets actually start flying. And now that I'm out, I get tons of people asking me all the time about their favorite TV shows and movies. What's realistic and what isn't? Well, there's only one way to find out. It's time to put Hollywood to the test. I'm Dom Rosso, and this is Media Lab. On this episode, we're gonna talk about situational awareness and tunnel vision. And I wanna talk about a scene where this guy gets his ass kicked because he has no awareness walking down an alleyway. But first, let's talk about a scene from End of Watch where these guys are absolutely locked on. Compton and 3 1 Street. Who is that? Who is that? Taylor's a baller. 13 X ray 13, send me an airship to set up a perimeter. Does he? Let's do this. It's clear over here. Crossing. The windows. You got left? I got right. Push, push, push. You're on my elbow. You call it out. You call it out if you see it. Dude, I see him. On the left. On the left. Ready? Go, go. Split. <laughs> you. It's on the left. You ready? Try to with me. You. Get the off her. I won't blow your head off. Get up. Put your hands over your head. Get up. Put your hands over your head. Get on your knees and cross your feet together. You hear me? Cross your legs. If I hear a word out of you, I will blow you out of your socks. Hook him, Z. Thirteen extra thirteen. Show code four. Suspect. Okay, obviously those guys were locked on in that scene. They were moving tactically, they were communicating, and they were covering down on different areas of responsibility. Could they have cleared it better? Of course, but for the movie and as far as Hollywood's concerned, that was really well done as far as, you know, what cops encounter, being intense and up close. So now let's talk about a scene in Training Day where he gets tunnel vision and he absolutely gets his ass kicked. Running, staring at his gun like, what do I do with this thing? Finger on the trigger. We should always keep our finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot something you want to destroy. So he's obviously running down here. He sees one threat, and that's where the tunnel vision comes in, right? Doesn't check his corner, doesn't clear any dead space. Now he gets flanked by this dude and causes an issue. He wasn't expecting it. Now he's on the ground, and when you have multiple attackers, the last place you want to be is the ground, trying to grapple with the guy. I mean, four Bs, right? Blades, boots, biting, and buddies. And this guy's dealing with two of them right now. He went to choke one guy out. He's like, I'm gonna choke this dude out. Totally dropping the other guy again. Got tunnel vision for the second time. If you have multiple people or even an unknown area, you need to be aware and prepared to fight multiple people at all times. Doesn't matter if you're drinking on whatever the heck you're on, antidepressants, it doesn't matter. You know, you still need to be able to understand your environment and get locked on when you're moving tactically, especially moving into that situation. That's when training kicks in and you go back to the most basic level of training that you've had. So now we're gonna take that, and we're gonna take it and break it down. All right, so Ethan Hawke comes around the corner, right? He's staring at his gun like he has no idea what to do with it. He also has his finger on the trigger, which we know that's not a good idea. We should always keep our finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot something you wanna destroy. He comes down here and he gets tunnel vision. He's getting tunnel vision on this guy that's attacking this girl. The reason that's bad is he gets so fixated on one target, he drops his surroundings. And any time that you're moving tactically, or even walking to my car, I'm checking my surroundings, I'm checking behind other little cubby holes, and it's not that I'm paranoid, it's just that it's a reality, right? Somebody can be hiding there. And in this situation, it's a perfect example of what not to do. Because as he goes past here, he's getting so fixated on this guy, he's only looking down his front sights, and what he doesn't see, because he didn't clear his corner, is the guy behind him, which comes up to him, bear hugs him, grabs him from behind, startle flinch kicks in, and now he's having to deal with this guy while this guy's charging him. And magically, because it's Hollywood, right, his gun just disappears. So this guy gets a knee, the rear attacker ends up swinging around, going back into the fence. You see a little bit of the judo, where he actually drops levels, gets his arm and tosses him over the shoulder. But he ends up falling down with him, and in the street, you know, that's a bad idea. So now I'm dealing with this guy, we're on the concrete, and what happens again is tunnel vision. He gets target fixated one more time because you attack me, he gets pissed off, and he says, you know what, I'm just gonna choke this guy out, you know, not paying attention to anything else. Gets worked over by this dude, keeps kicking him, kicking him, and by the fourth one, which any one of those could have been a knockout strike, he grabs his leg and does a sweep here, where he ends up falling on the ground, 
and then it hits him once to finally stop the fight. The whole point is, is that he didn't clear his corner, he got target fixated, and he got wrapped up on just one dude to come save the day. Now we're gonna see what this looks like in full speed, and we're on cement, and it's my turn to get my ass kicked, so let's see what that looks like. Leave her alone! Put your hands where I can see him! Get down on the ground! Get down on the ground! Get down! All right, guys, we're in the alleyway. We're throwing each other on concrete. Like we always say, we're breaking down movie scenes. Everything that we do isn't exactly how we should be doing it in reality. We're doing it for you, the viewer. We're having fun with it. And uh, I got to let Dylan beat me up this time, right? Uh, no, I don't remember that part. <laughs> uh, I remember getting flipped on the concrete, though. Well, I thought he was going to get to beat me up more than he did. But either way, I appreciate it, brother. And uh, we got Aaron here from Trident Response Group. Always good to have him out here. He's been helping us out a lot. Main thing is tunnel vision. Don't get wrapped up in, in the one target. Don't get so focused that you lose sight of your environment and your awareness. Clear your corners, clear your space, and make sure you guys are training for reality. And let's, uh, let's take it to the questions now. All right, guys, time for the questions. There's never enough time to do them all, but we usually get about two per episode. So we're gonna answer the first one right now. Do you follow any diets? So that's an interesting question. Really, it's all about staying with lean meats, proteins, vegetables and, and fruits. You know, I start there and then kind of go out with complex carbs, but I don't follow any specific diet. So I hear a lot of guys like paleo and all that, but just eat healthy, eat smart, stay away from fried foods and anything that isn't a smart choice. Next question. What kind of protein shakes do you drink? <laughs> uh, I feel like somebody's setting me up for something, but if they're not, uh, I usually use something where it's isolate and it's just something that's really simple and basic. Synthesis and some type of isolate. That's pretty basic stuff. All right, guys, that wraps it up. Always appreciate the questions. See you guys in the next episode of Media Lab.